luckily life is a learning journey and we have the opportunity to change our course and and change the things that we've been doing over the last few weeks i've been actually writing a little bit more in my system rather than making videos about it and you know just realizing different things and, and noticing different opportunities so that's why we get to today with a different title from what the previous video suggested it would be but this video is all about working with the raw materials in your Zettelkasten and beyond. So tagging, process and structure. So what is our point of departure? In my last video, I looked at the design principles. Those few things were just atomicity of notes, clear relationship between notes and a separation of input and output. There was a little bit more in each of those things and we went off on tangents as is normal. And the final one was simple categorization of notes. That is what I wanted to get into today but it's a lot broader than what I just suggested in terms of areas, books, and chapters, because that was looking at just context tagging. But categorization is broader than just context tagging. It's also the process of bottom-up development because you're working with raw materials in your database and things that are not well formed yet, and you're taking them from a state of not being good to hopefully being a lot better and usable in different contexts. Another point is creating the appropriate scaffolding so that your knowledge garden can grow. So that's adding a little bit of structure. You know, if I, if I envisage a creeper growing up the wall, if you don't have anything for it to grow on, it won't grow very tall. And that's the way that I'm thinking about categorization. And the questions that I'm asking myself are, how can I manage my workspaces so that I can sort out my mind digitally um, because it's chaos in there? And then how can I build the scaffolding that will allow me to put things in the right place? What I've gone away and done and you know, what's a continued process essentially is looking at other people's methods and trying to you know, figure out what works for me. And I think that's the hard work. It's not like a one size fits all. And you know, because it, these systems are so flexible, you really need to figure out how you wanna make it work for you. I'm also hopefully not so arrogant to assume that this is the right answer. There's so many different ways of doing these things. And I'm hopefully just able to plant a few suggestions of what you can do in your base using your structure that's already there and you know, maybe to apply some of these principles and make it a little bit smoother maybe we'll look at some of the methods a little bit later and then you know see where some of those source materials might be so what are the commonalities in these methods okay the first one is context tagging obviously it's just a way to resurface your relevant notes later tagging either by context subject or keyword and I'm gonna get into all of these a little bit later. So let me just cruise on through. And then the second one is a method of facilitating incremental progress. So it's moving something slowly along and taking it from, as I said, this little baby idea to a, a grown up idea. And the way that I think about that is thinking in stacks. So, you know, the traditional one is to do, doing, done, but also looking at virtual workshops, like different areas where I'm developing ideas. And then the third one is levels of abstraction or emergence. So this is a topic in its own right. I'll just name it exactly that because it's very cool. Probably the least well-developed in my mind, but we'll look at it anyways. So it's also important to do this whilst keeping it flexible. You know, we're still trying to do it bottom up and not coming with a heavy hand of structure and folders and, you know, making our process not very pleasant. So what does this look like in practice? Okay, we're gonna look at context, subject, keyword tagging first. I'm gonna look at some advice from How to Take Smart Notes by Sonke Arens. Great book to read if you're interested in this sort of thing. You don't have to. You can find a lot of these things on the internet, but oftentimes it's nice to find it in a nice structured place. So Sonke says, and I hope I'm pronouncing his name right, keywords should be chosen carefully and sparsely, i.e. not adding 15 different things that you'll never, or that will just create a mess in your mind and you know not actually enable you to find the thing later. And then keywords should always be assigned with an eye towards the topics you are working on or interested in, never by looking at the notes in isolation. And then you said there, it requires thinking. So it's not just a case of seeing, oh, that's got notes in the book title, how to take smart notes. I'm going to put there notes, hashtag notes. It's more around like, structured thinking or Zettelkasten or whatever it might be. Just an example. And things that I'm asking myself when I'm looking at notes, what are the questions that I want to answer long term, like in 10 years, 15 years, whatever. And then 
also what are the breadcrumbs that I can leave for myself that will remain beyond my short term memory because I know that like my memory is bad and I think everyone's memory is bad like from, from a transitioning from short term to long term memory the way that our brains process those memories is faulty to some degree and then this I've just put this here how do I get contextual congruence without even understanding what that means. Contextual congruence is this like buzzword. But I think the one thing there is I just, I just want to avoid getting trapped in keyword world. So contextual con congruence is a little bit higher picture or higher level than, you know, just keywords in, a, in an article. So moving from just like, what is, what are the words in the wiki to what is the point of the article? So my method is looking at what are the books that I want to write. And I divide that into three different things. So the highest level is actually areas. Like in what areas am I looking to write those books? So it could be business, spirituality, professional life, that overlaps with business, um, you know, personal life, relationships. Those are all different areas. And then books looks at what are the books that I want to write? So for instance, in relationships maybe you'd want to write a book on marriage or write a book on friendship or write a write a book on dealing with strangers or something like that so that's like a sub book and then in those books i would break it down into chapters so marriage would be about like you know the different challenges of marriage or the joys of marriage or whatever it might be so another book title that i'm using is decision making now decision making applies in a number of different areas it applies in relationships it applies in professional life, business, it applies in sociology and politics or whatever, like it's all different levels of decision making or, you know, decision making is pertinent to all those different things. And then within decision making, I might look at, you know, different chapters within that. So, you know, if I'm looking at personal decision making, I might look at fallacies and, and biases and stuff like that. And each of those would be a chapter in that book. So that's just the way that I I think about it when I'm when I'm doing my tags and it really helps me to to try and get things at the right level. It also helps you to develop these skeletons of things that you're working on, you know, it's because what Sonke said up here, which is look at the topics you are interested in, those tend to be the topics that I'm interested in. I mean, you know, these skeletons are the things that are naturally in my mind already. So this also applies to input, you know, I can use the areas, books and chapters approach. And for me, the Z just indicates where I've written it myself. And it also makes it more searchable because now in my search bar, I can say ZA and there we go. I've got relationships, spirituality, money, and I can go ZB. I can look at working, Christianity, debt. Interesting one that comes up there. Um, ZC, I could look at trade-offs, hiring, prioritization, that really makes it easy for me to go and find things there. I think that's what I'm trying to say. So the difference between my output, which is denoted with a ZA colon areas, and my input, which is just areas, is that Z and that colon. So I can use other namespaces or spaces in those names. And if you use a forward slash, it will actually create the link between the input and the output tag. So I don't wanna get into that. That might be a little bit confusing for some. So that is another way to do your naming so that you can simplify your life a little bit later down the line. Okay, so some examples, I think we've chatted a little bit about that. Definitely something I wanna look at a bit more in future, looking at in my database, what I'm working on and how it, uh, how it manifests in, in writing, etc. The second thing I wanna look at is thinking in stacks or virtual workshops. Now, there's two components to this that I wanna look at. The first is timelines or maturity of development. What is done, what is in progress and what needs to be developed. So that's really thinking about like, you know, managing your process very clearly. And some ideas there are the one that I use, I think, which is quite nice, is empty. You know, if a note is empty and I've just had a title, I'll say it's empty. If it's something that I want to develop, I'll, I'll just use the hashtag develop. If I've written something that's, you know, quite meaty, but it's still in its raw state, I use raw. And then medium baked, that's like where I start, you know, doing a little bit more work. I haven't done as much work on that side and, and moving things into reviews. So, you know, that this will all probably change. That's the beauty of having a flexible system. Another one that you could use is, is steak. So it goes from blue, rare, medium, medium well, well, bleh, I burnt it. You know, you can just use something that is visually or sticks with you from a process management perspective. 
Okay, and the reason I I've avoided using to do doing done in my stacks is because I use that in CRMs. So in my personal and work CRM, I use to do doing done to manage tasks. So that's the first element. The second element is managing working areas. So the idea here is to set up different working areas for yourself. Again, using tags. So inbox, I think this is the most common one that I've seen across a bunch of systems. And that just is something that's come in that I have not yet processed. Again, like, you know, it's separate from like the, the note writing process where it's empty or fleeting, or whatever. It's like something that I have to give my attention to. And then some other ones that you can look at are ideas, things to investigate, questions, graveyard is like a, a denotation of something that's moved, that's past its life, you know, it's, it's dead and you don't want to delete it, but you just put it in graveyard. Observations and fleeting are some of the ones that I've used before in previous videos. I don't use the emojis. I definitely would like to going forward because it's just a nice visual way. And I think, you know, humans are, are visual creatures. So anything that you can do to help your brain remember is going to really help. And then, you know, sort, stray, junk, all of those just denote some sort of process. You know, it's a working area. I need to sort this stuff out. This stuff is stray. It's lost. And this stuff is junk. It's rubbish. Um, so yeah, some ideas there. Hopefully some of those will work for you. Levels of abstraction or emergence. This one is the coolest for me. By way of analogy, I'm going to start with deck of playing cards. So here is my deck of playing cards. And what I was trying to go for was that look when you played solitaire when you were a kid and all the different things fall down and you filled the whole screen, but I didn't have the time to do that. So this is your deck of playing cards. And now each of these playing cards represents a note in your database. You know, you've written all these different notes and now you're looking to aggregate them together to give them some sort of emergent property that is not that is beyond just them individually being a note so if i think of an example from rummy i can have a run which is a numerical sequence of three or more cards of the same suite so that is my two three four there so that is one grouping of the cards i can also have a set a group of three or four cards of the same rank and that's also from rummy if i look at it from a poker perspective if I have five cards from the same suite, that would be a flush. It's just another way to group these cards. And then if I have a straight, again from poker, it's just a numerical sequence of five cards from different suites. It's another way to group them. But the key point here is that one card can be in more than one of these different groups. Using things in a repeatable fashion, just by drawing on the right resources and just reorganizing these things. So. There's different levels that you can you can take the cards to again you have my two fives in the corner here i realized that you wouldn't have been able to see those cards earlier but now you can so that makes everyone happy i hope thinking a little bit beyond this you know you could even have other groupings where you just have red cards you know if you're just having your diamonds and hearts then that would be your red cards or your mail cards that would be your jacks and your kings so there's so many different ways to organize these things but it's all using different notes and building them up and the important part here is that it's flexible you can move things around and you know it doesn't have to stay fixed in that position for all eternity so the zettelkasten method is actually or the zettelkasten storage of your notes is only one level of, of abstraction it's just relating two notes to one another but there's so much more that you can do and i'd like to thank Nick Milo and linking your thinking for this, like introducing this concept of MOCs. It's like really helped me think about this a little bit more. And it talks about having map notes where you then start grouping notes together in these maps of content. So your notes stays the same or your, your base note stays the same, but then you start grouping those things into different levels of abstraction. So it's like a pyramid almost. My, my face is, is hiding the bottom right of the pyramid, but I like to use my hands. So, you know, you've got your, all your notes at the bottom and they feed into your different chapters. And then those chapters feed into your different books and then your books will, you know, be related to a certain area. So this is now looking how you can create value later on by grouping notes together in maps, but not, not just by tagging them. You can use the tags to help you do your grouping, but it's, it's, it's separate processes here. As I said, this, this area is still very much work in progress for me. 
um, I really would recommend if you're interested here to, to look at linking your thinking's videos. But I think the important thing is that, you know, it's just doing different things with different groups. So what is my basic unit? And, and we'll look at a little bit more in Nick's, when I look at Nick's example in another framework here. Bringing this all together, what we're really doing is we're starting with a whole bunch of items in our journal, which are denoted by these tags. Like these are the workshop areas, reflection, idea, fleeting, journal, any, any of these things are just like working ideas, basically. And as I said, this is usually in my daily notes journal. I then put these things through a funnel, which is just either a search or query, and then I will decide what I want to work on based on you know, my interest for that day. And this goes then into a new note, which gets the hashtag raw. And then as I develop that, or you know, figure out what I need to develop a little bit more, it goes through this process, you know, this stack moving from one to the next to the next. The final element of the categorization is this tagging. So ZA, areas, B, book, ZC, chapter, as discussed before. I also do it by an indented process, but we'll get into that in future videos. Now we get to hopefully quite a fun part of the video where we start looking at footholds of these ideas in other frameworks. So I think it's a good place to start is uh, linking your thinking. Their methodology is very cool and they've got a course and workshops and lots of cool things. And I also quite like the look of what Nick Milo is doing. So these are the levels of emergence and you know, it's just abstraction beyond the different, beyond your atomic units of a note. So the first level is a note. The second level is a Zettelkasten where you're relating those notes. The third level almost makes an atomic unit of the Zettelkasten notes that are linked together and then builds a map of content. The fourth level then makes a, you know, the atomic unit is the level three, which it then aggregates into a different structure. This is my understanding of it at least. I hope I'm doing it justice. And the homepage is the level five, which for me, it seems a little bit redundant, but it seems to work for a lot of people, so to each their own. Some great principles that I found watching videos, Nick talks about structure being earned, and I really like this idea, but at the same time, you know, you've got an idea of what your interests are, you know what you're going to be writing about, so having that skeleton, it's up to you. I like having the skeleton. They also talk about when your notes become messy, you come through a mental squeeze point or a struggle point, and that's where you start defining the structure, and I found that to be a very cool principle. I don't really work like that. I sort of do a little bit of pre-structuring before I actually get into the note process. So maybe not 100% right. So that's the first one, which is um, linking your thinking. Then looking at Lumen's Zettels of Zettels. So what Lumen would do, and we spoke about Lumen in the previous video, if, if this is your first time seeing this channel, what Lumen would do is he would have his Zettels, so his his index cards that he'd written on in complete fashion, so they would be usable in other areas, and then he would make index cards which linked those different ideas on another zettel. So it's also indicating that level of abstraction where you're taking two different things and you're making something higher order from it. So that's that's the thinking behind abstraction or emergence. So Robert Persig's methodology. So who's Robert Persig? Robert Persig wrote a famous book called Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. He's got a very, very interesting story. Um, he went through a psychiatric clinic and yeah, I um, highly recommend reading it. He wrote a second book called Lila, and I haven't read that. I think it's Lila or Lila, maybe, potato, potato. And in that second book, he spoke about his own index card system that he used to sort of manage the chaos in his mind. and. I link that to the digital workshops because his categorizations were unassimilated was the first one, which is new cards that haven't been organized. Maybe that's my equivalent of fleeting. Then he had program, which was an instruction for his system or instruction for something to do. And maybe even like the same concept as Lumen, like having a link of your Zettels or link of his cards. The third one was crit which was a holding pen for notes that he wanted to move to junk and junk was the notes that he deemed to be below par and not worth publishing and then tough were the cards which had been written and but then had been difficult to organize the next one is the eisenhower matrix so that is also akin to this digital workshops or at least denoting different areas and the eisenhower matrix is that you know for that that two by two which is 
urgence versus importance. So if something is urgent and important, I want to go work on it. So I do that first. And you know, this shows that you can use a combination of tags to indicate in your digital workshop where you want to go and work. And then GTD, um, that's getting things done. That's a book by David Allen, which is quite famous for from a knowledge working perspective, just because it talks about, you know, being very productive, if that's your vibe. So this is where the to do doing done comes in using Kanban styles as well. I think, I think David Allen actually introduced Inbox. I'm going to come clean here. I haven't read the book, but I, I worked in an organization that like revered his work. So I think I've got a lot of it by osmosis, I hope. But the other thing is that it's also very flexible. Like, you know, you need to make the method work for yourself. Then Lumen's methodology, what I see popularized in how to take smart notes by Sonke Arens, this idea of moving from fleeting or literature or to permanent, maybe, maybe the literature is even in the wrong place there, but the idea of moving from fleeting to permanent notes just shows us like moving things along the process. What's coming next? I realize I, I probably am able to add more value if I spend more time writing. So hopefully I'll be able to spend some more time writing. And then I want, what I want to really look at is queries and indentation, because this is starting to emerge to me as like a really important and, and cool thing, cool way of working. And that's why I've said they're magic. Like I really like the ability of querying a database. It just completely transforms the way that you work because you can be super scatterbrained, use your tags and then magic. And then, uh, you know, speaking to that point, managing or at least trying to manage your professional life. So uh, a couple of my colleagues are starting to use LogSeek, so I'd love to make a video that is applicable to, to them. Further resources for this video, linking your thinking videos, I will link to those below. Nick does a really good job. He just seems to be very authentic and I, I like his vibe. Maybe one day I can be like him. And then Jamie Mills has this course, which is Rome Untangled. Uh, it's, it's the first Part of it is free. I'd highly recommend looking through that if, if this, this sort of um, interested you because he also looks at ways of structuring and working and doing things in a repeatable way. And yeah, his course is very well laid out. So with that said, I look forward to seeing you back here soon. Uh, thank you so much for your support once again. I'm really enjoying this. It's a lot of hard work, but I, I appreciate the feedback and the comments that I'm getting. So hopefully I'll continue to make some good videos.